Yo, this is Gamer Guide, and today I'm going to be showing you what I think is the best power setup for a Dyson Sphere program. So eventually you're going to run into some sort of power problems. You're going to have to figure out a good solution. Uh, I've used all of uh, the basic early to mid game power setups, and I don't really like any of them. So I ended up basically abandoning all of these, um, except I guess the solar panel, which I'll show you here in a second. But uh, my system is I don't actually generate any power on my home planet. So I have, I have zero uh, power generation buildings or structures on my planet. Uh, the majority of the, I guess, mid-game, you're sort of working your way up to the Ray Tracer and the Dyson Swarm. But it's not really that good in my opinion, and it takes up a whole lot of resources. So I actually don't use any of these, and I'll show you here in a second what I do. If we take a look at my power grid... You can see I do zero generation on the home planet. None. Okay? So all of this 100% is just discharge power. So we can see uh, what I use here, and that's the energy exchanger. Okay? So I use the energy exchanger to actually uh, discharge accumulator batteries um, that I charge on a different planet. So I charge these accumulated plant, uh, uh, batteries with solar panels on a different planet and I ship them back using the interstellar logistics station. Each of these towers can discharge at a rate of 45 megawatts, so that's a lot for their footprint. I have three, so I have 135 megawatts of power just right here in this tiny little section. And of course, I could expand these. I could add more if I have enough accumulators and they don't have to be in this configuration, obviously. I could sort of organize them however I want. Because of that, I have, um, I'm using uh, 47 right here. It says I have zero uh, generation capacity. So I have some room here. You could see they split the workload between the three. So each of them are using, like, jumping between, like, 15 and 17 here. Okay. So uh, I could actually show it increase here. I'm going to start some research. Uh, let's activate some gas giants. And uh, you'll see these will jump. So you can see it's jumping up to 20. And once the rest of the, the factories come up, uh, they'll increase. We've got 60 demand right now. So these will go up to about 135. And then I could add more if I need extra. All right, so, uh, so how do we do this? So the setup is pretty simple. First, uh, you can look at your star map. And you can try and I find a planet that's relatively close to the sun. So if you click on these planets, you can see that they have a solar energy ratio. This one has 118. Uh, let's check our home planet. Has 100, probably 99. That's not bad. But we have another planet right here that has a solar energy ratio of 136. So this is the planet that I chose to put my uh, solar panels on so essentially I just this panel has nothing but solar panels all it does is charge accumulators with energy exchangers and ship them ship charged ones back okay so let's take a look at our home planet setup and then we'll, we'll go over to our our mercury planet over there and take a look so here's our interstellar logistics station and all we do is we have a demand on this station for charged or full accumulators, okay? So this station here is requesting full accumulators from wherever I might be charging them out in the solar system. So I put a remote demand on here. Local supply doesn't matter because they'll be belted out right here. And then for um, the regular accumulators, I have a local demand, but you could. This doesn't matter too much for you because you can just uh, belt them in. But I have a small factory on the other side of this area here, so I'm uh, I'm droning them into this building. So it's requesting uh, accumulators. So then we have a belt that comes out right here, and this takes full uh, accumulators and distributes them out into however many. Uh, energy exchangers you want and you can see the energy exchangers are using up the uh, full accumulators and then spitting out on the other end empty ones and they just get belted right back into the uh, interstellar logistics station okay so these empty ones get shipped off 
to our charging planet. Okay? So that's all there is to it. And you can see real quick, I just have a really, really small factory here. You don't need a whole lot of accumulators. I'd probably have at least 500 to start. Um, but you can see I'm just generating a few accumulators here. And they're going in to a logistics station. But you can belt them directly, obviously. Into your planet. Or into your logistics station. So uh, here's our... Uh, solar panels. So you're going to need a lot of solar panels on your initial setup. You're going to want to take a lot of sol solar panels, uh, an interstellar uh, logistics station, and uh, some belts and stuff, obviously. And then also you'll want to build um, two of these energy exchangers. So I'll show you. I'll go ahead and hop over to the other planet, and I will show you the setup there. Let's make sure we have fuel. Just load up on some fuel here. All right. And take a little extra fuel just in case. All right. So let's go and uh, take a trip over to our charging planet and watch the full, full process go here. And we'll fast forward a bit through this part. Alright, so here's our planet. There's our planet, and we could take a look. Uh, so, let's fly over to our logistics station. Okay, so you can see we have a ton of uh, solar panels set up right here. Uh, and we have solar panels sort of all over. So we have solar, solar panels here. You can set up whatever configuration of solar panels you like here. So I have some at the uh, North and South Pole. You could do the equator belt. Um, I have North and South Pole, and then I have some on this side and a bunch on this side. You can just sort of scatter them all around and really fill up the entire area with solar panels. So sort of uh, however you choose to do this part, that part's not super, super important since there's actually no energy consumption on this planet unless you want to add miners and stuff later on you can so what do we do here we uh, set up an inter uh, stellar logistics station and we make a demand uh, for empty accumulators so you can see we got a demand for empty accumulators so this thing will ship empty accumulators um, from our home planet to here and then just we just do the opposite of what we do on our home planet here we pipe empty accumulators into our energy exchangers and we set them to charge instead of discharge so now these ones are charging up okay so as soon as they charge up we get a full accumulator and we belt them back into our exchanger or our logistics station and now as soon as we have 200 of these stored in here uh, the logistics station will dispatch um, a vessel and ship it back. So if we want to increase the speed here, we simply just make sure that our um, our network can handle it. We're generating with this many um, solar panels. We're generating about uh, over a hundred right now megawatts. So uh, basically, we just uh, increase how many of these energy exchangers we have. The more we have, the more uh, we can charge at once, and the faster we generate. Um, uh, accumulators, full accumulators. And that's basically it. So this way we have no uh, energy generation on our, on our home planet. We keep it nice and clean and uh, we can really dedicate uh, all of the energy generation on a particular planet. And this is a good one since you can see we get in our intensity 136%. We get really good intensity here. Um, on our solar panels on this particular planet. So that's my current setup. This is the one I've liked uh, so far the best. Uh, it's uh, fun to set up, uh, a little bit more fun than just spamming uh, solar panels, I think, on your home plan and doing like an equator belt or something. Uh, I think this is a cooler set setup. So give it a shot and let us know if you guys want to see any more Dyson Sphere program videos. Mm -hmm.